I guess, how do you relay the message if you have a kid, say we have a freshman coming in, and he's kind of, you know, he, you recruited him because he's a good player, you recruited him because he's always kind of put up numbers, but he's doing some stuff that is going to hurt him. It's going to hurt him, but you don't, you, you also told him, hey, we're not bringing right. you in here to change yet. Yeah. You know? There is a tough thing because, and you see this all the time. And I've said, you know, you, people that are really, just really good high school hitters, they might be a great high school hitter, but that's where it ends. And I think we've all played with guys who, like, really weren't that good in high school, and suddenly, you know, they show up in college and you go, like, who is this guy? And whether it was the pace of the game change, that their swing was actually built for, for reaction speed, whatever the case may be, sometimes the guy gets his plateau. Eventually, our swing flaws will end our career. That's simple. Because if we can't adjust, this game doesn't stop. It just keeps putting more on the table. Now you get hit cutters, you know? Well, how'd you feel the first time you saw a real cutter? Well, I was like, what the? Ah, jeez, never again. <laughs> the kid. I remember I was at the old boy yard and Pitch was sort of a bully, right? And he throws it. I'm like, oh man, was that your slider? He goes, no, that was my cutter. I'm like, what? He goes, this is my slider. I'm like, I quit. This is <laughs> Really, I mean, it's just like, wow. But then I, I see people, you know, can in see that, um, whether it be high school kids, college kids, pros, you get against kind of that's, you know, doing things you're not used to, and you can feel defeated. As I tell everybody, hey, don't worry. You'll get used to it. If you did this every day, you'll get used to it. It just takes time. You know, but the problem is, young young freshman coming up, what's he want to do, coach? Wants to make you proud, right? Wants to show I'm the man. You know? And they want to be the man. But suddenly this game's different. You know, like I said, eighty six can chew you up if someone knows how to throw it. You know? A uh, guy with 86 that actually extends into it like that. If you throw a guy throwing 86, it's like you hit 90 because you don't see the ball at the last minute and then boom, it's on you. His extension is like 13 inches versus 8. Big difference. But they have to get used to it. It's like, okay, that's why I like kind of over, over training to try and get used to at least, oh, I can handle this now. And it just takes time at every level. But I've seen guys see pitching and almost like are ready to quit. <laughs> because here comes that negative thought. What's that negative thought? I can't hit that. I'll never be able to hit that. Oh God, I, I, I'm just not that good. Because you take the singular event of seeing something the first time, and it's, it's, it's a powerful message, isn't it? I realize, okay, how did you do after about a month of that? Better each time. But you just learn. You, you, you try to make adjustments and you find out which ones work. And then you're seeing the same picture often, you know, because yeah. you're playing sequencing. Yeah. And that's what we talked about Rolodex saying the good thing. The tough thing about college because you only see a guy in you know, one series. But like I said, at least in pro ball, oh, here he is again. And that guy might have got me one time, but you know what? I know what he's got now. And that's where you get guys trying to communicate. And it's tough when a guy says, oh man, Fergie, that guy's just got some serious bite. But it sounds good, but until you see that bite, you go, oh, that's his bite. But once you've seen it, if you're in the right mood, like, okay, I got that. I know what that looks like. And have you ever seen any pitcher that has the exact same look to any, anything he throws? A little bit of difference for him, right? You know, some guys, like I said, will throw two different breaks, right? But until you kind of internalize it, let your mind, everything kind of adjust to it, the first time could be a little bit of a shock. That's where you see the little kids that are seeing those, you know, they get into high school and they have the big equalizer, the beginning of velocity, and guys can actually throw those off-speed pitches for a strike. So there's that adjustment period, you know? And again, coming back to what we left on going to lunch, how do I hit because I've got to maintain, I've got to hit 95, I've got to hit the best fastball he throws, and then I've got to adjust to handle the off-speed. And uh, some of the things we talked about, people have seen in some of the stuff we put out, the right drill, which is basically, um, it could be like a two or three part drill. Um, it starts with what we talk about, you know, getting hitters to practice what their trigger is. So the best essence is they make their move from setup to a 50-50, and then they get their flip. And we want to find out what's your trigger. And what you're going to find, 
99% of them make this trigger. All right? Okay, so front side move. So it's tough to get them like, okay, back side trigger, back side trigger, back side trigger. So that's your basic 50-50 to a trigger drill. And it's just getting them to kind of like feel that. And then you pick them off and let them try to get a feel for the back side working. The right drill is a variant because you get them to a 50-50 and they're going to ride the front leg. And our only job is to swing and keep the front leg bent. 99% of kids brace that leg too fast. And when that leg braces, look at the effect all the way up the chain. And who's it going to affect? So the front leg will straighten eventually, but I don't want to straighten early. Okay? And if I'm going on fastball and I see a slider and I brace, look at the position I'm in. Okay? If I go fastball and I can ride, now I've got something. Some guys are good enough. I showed a video of a guy hitting fastball versus uh, slider. And you see in his stance, he went here, and he was here for the slider, and he was here a little bit shorter for the fastball. So you've got guys that can actually adjust in flight. Good for them. But then most of us, human beings, oh, fastball a little bit, but I've got to hold this position. I've got to hold this position so I can get my good swing off. And believe me, I can be all the way out here, and if I hit through spin, I've done, I'm going to do damage. Because I can hit through it and I can maintain it. But what do most guys look like hitting through? I got no shot. First, I'm trying to hit it in a zone about that big. And if I do hit it in a zone that big, it's going to beat me up. It's ground ball. It's, it's no win. But if I can get there and hit, hit through it, I'm going to do damage. Spin's built in. Back spin is built in. Include that filthy change of change that's a spin too. Yes, sir. I've been hearing a lot of guys talk about having a strong front side on like the land, and I had never really heard that. But it kind of, you know, and I we, I, we deal. I, I have certain hitters in my mind where they want to lock that knee too quick, limits their space. But is there is that a thing out there with some guys talking about kind of like, you know, that front side? You know, I'm gonna defer that to John. John is like one of our social media experts here. He hears a lot. No, no, you really, I mean, you've got your hand in a lot of places, which, man, I envy. I, I, yeah, I, don't, I didn't yeah. know if that was a thing or not. I, just I hadn't heard that one. I, th I think for guys who don't understand the swing, whenever they see some forward momentum, they, I mean, but some of, some of our guys, it's mobility, some of it's stability, strength. But I, I hadn't heard a ton of people talk about it. One thing we do talk about, which people don't understand, is that, yes, I control this, back move, but I maintain pressure between my legs. This leg isn't free falling, neither is this one. So it's almost like I'm here, but I still gotta have resistance here because that's yeah. where the energy comes in. It's the deceleration. Yes, I, think it's the I knew there's a technical guy here. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, the lead leg bracing or to assist in deceleration, because you have to stop the front side. To create. To create, create the backside to yeah. come through. So I can't have backside without right. the right front side. So. But the problem is, if I create this front side, I got a back side. So if I come down hard, and that's why I think anything that triggers wrong thought, okay, here's one of my favorite ones. Guys relate to her, but it says, get down early. I just want to throw things at you. It's like, get down early. Get down early. So you create this hard move, you just lost your backside. I challenge you to have backside after doing this. And you're going you're gonna to feel weak until you're going to get try to get more. And you get I got to gotta find some other compensation move in my body to try and get it going, it's probably not going to be in my favor. So a lot of times I talk about people. Um, we talk about, you know, that you hear the kinematic sequence with all the uh, sensors and stuff like that. But what people remember and forget is there's a kinetic chain right there. That's where the kinetic chain is. It's the ground. And it's the ground under my heels. That's where my bones, my body hit the ground. That's where my strength is. So my first move is here. Now, I mean, I got so much right there, but generally what happens, that heel comes up, I broke the kinetic chain. There are guys that can hit that way, but you're also going to find that they're also compensating up here with the big body, but do they have the zone that's ideal? So if I can maintain that back heel, I've got a lot of power coming. Don't, if you weigh 140 pounds, I've got 140 pounds coming. <coughs> but the minute you lose that, you've got about 60 pounds. You know? But again, we do a lot of little back foot stuff. That was this thing for a long time, wasn't it? Mm. 
Like people were saying the back heel should come up as the front heel. Oh yeah, you, this was this was. Yeah, I mean, all effort. there used to be this yeah, all the sure. time. Yeah. But yeah, just think about it. Now you're standing the kinetic chain. How? Why would you ever do that? Okay. Answer me this: Would anybody want to throw that way? How do we throw? Where's my heel? Where's the power of my back? I got to have that ground. Once I get that and I fire forward, then it can release. But if I'm here, where are my throws going to be? You know. Our bad throws from the infield outfield, balance issues, footwork, whatever the case may be, going to our shoulders, losing the legs, you know. As an infielder, a lot of times you just gotta make your plays, right? The minute you stop and try to readjust, your body dis disconnects. I want that thing continuous. I don't want that body to stop. I want to just stay in motion because when it's in movement, it's strong. But then it stops and then I gotta reload, bad things gonna happen. There's just, you know, no consistency. I don't know where things are going to happen. But again, if you feel the inside part of that back heel, I do a lot of work with guys just feeling how I can make a move. And I don't do that like this. I got to make sure I can feel it and feel that bend as I go, kind of that I get in my legs. But you'll see a lot of kids can't do that because what's their trigger point? Okay. So that's what I'm saying in the gym. In the gym, make them do weird things. I don't care what they think. If you can explain them what you're trying to create and that they can do that all the time. They can make moves and start feeling that like, ooh, how's that feel? And you talk about being able to slow the game down. I can make my moves like I don't have to rush because I'm in control. But if I do it wrong, I'm going to go to the balls of my feet. My body's ready. I can roll, feel everything's just shaky. Nothing's in, in balance. Posture's off. Lower half is disconnected from my glutes. It's like, All right, we're going to show that the feet work I told earlier about the hitter adjusting to a slider and then to a fastball. And pardon my, uh, my description of it, but you'll kind of see Over the years, I've had a lot of hitting coaches condemn and criticize the late kick, with the biggest complaint being that it affects the hitter's timing. I disagree. In the next clips, you'll see you guys know where I a disagree. hitter can actually make adjustments to his landing point from the kick easily when pitch recognition comes into play. On this first pitch, the hitter is going to be hitting a changeup. And as you see, he will carry his foot to a certain point, establishes his foot. See the right drill? I was right, it was a changeup. Okay, but see the right drill? All right, he's got a shot from there. Right here at this point here, and then continue his swing. The next pitch was a fastball. So we're going to see the same hitter make the same move and adjust within the kick itself with not a lot of conscious effort into fastball timing. So as you can see, he makes the adjustment to come down here for the fastball and he carried a little bit farther see the heel down for the off speed speaks volumes and again we may not even recognize the spatial distance but when I look at spatial distance I'm thinking time microseconds and when we shave time you can feel it and they say look, uh, 95 mile or fastball is 40.43 less than a half a second of reaction, but I'm telling you, you can feel it. Make you really feel good when you're balanced. Doug, you said earlier though, um, I'm not saying that the guy didn't have flexion in the back leg on the changeup, but you said if the guy straightens out the back leg, he's done. So where's the fine he line there? No, but the, he rode. Right. He was right in. So if a hitter goes, as you watch your hitters, you see that leg straight, they lost their backside. He's going, then he straightens out because he, you see how he lost here, but he kept the ankle down and the heel down, right? He's got something to deliver. So that's why I see that can go straight because we're in a ride. I can't keep this, this is uncomfortable. So I get her to ride and I'm just getting, it's almost like now you see how bail trade hit, hit those curveballs. Drop down just to keep this where? Here. Because that's the only way to stay through spin. And there are times you see him hitting curveballs that seem like you're about three inches off the ground because they're able to stay through them.
trying to find a different balance. Uh, Toby, what's the record for balance work? Continuous balance work? Oh, uh, like two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> it's true. Toby was here. Like he was in there making swing adjustments. And for two, we, we talked, and all he did was try to find how his body worked. And he's 35 years old. 36. 35 now. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. But again, the feel of realizing you've done something for so long, it's like, okay, as I say, balance isn't normal. So it's feeling, how do I move? And same thing with Mark. That's some really weird things going on that he really had to work to feel balanced and then fire. That's a really scary feeling for a lot of college players, especially, and I'm not saying that like nobody knows that, but yeah. it's for so many of the guys come in and they've loaded the same way or they've, uh, you know, stepped away or whatever, however they have gotten ready as they get into their swing. To change that is really scary. Terrifying. And then when when they're maybe doing that in the fall, and it's usually when you're a freshman, when you first are coming, coming across that, you, you're getting thrown into the fall with all kinds of stuff going on. And Trying to earn your spot. Yeah, let, let's go figure out how to have a different kind of balance off live pitching. And, and it freezes them a lot of times. And, and, and hopefully you have the environment where you're allow, allowing them to work and go through that process, but that's not always the case. Well, here's the case, but the case is, <laughs> as coaches, yeah. we have to demand that. And I know that's the toughest thing based upon the personalities in which we are working with. <laughs> but we have to demand that because we have to understand it. That's our job. You're the buffer, remember? Mm -hmm. And if you can explain, like, we need to get that done, it's going to take time. There's going to be a little bit of, you know, a learning curve. I mean. Honestly, they're guys you touch, and suddenly, man, they're just different hitters. You know, I mean, it's you, it's, you can't point out which one's going to be a different hitter. I talked about, Doug, put your hand up. One, one hour became a different hitter, and he's able to build on that. Literally, he has immediately had greater success than he ever had in his life. Okay, but he's had to build on for consistency, get into game speed, the whole nine yards, find his adjustments, fine tune work on it, uh, understand his body. Doug's got a great understanding because you know one of his great loves is exercise science. He's had some great internships with some really leading people in the field. So he has a better grasp of what his body is doing than most players. So it, I think it really helped him. Like, okay, I kind of know what I want to feel. Kind of work from almost a clinical point to go put his fixes in order. Whereas other kids, it's like, and this is foreign, and the first thing they want to do is they want to quit. No, 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 i got to go back the other way. Yeah, they want to get back to their comfort. Isn't that why you put the weight in their hand, though? And, and to try to take the, like, swing completely out of context? And you mean the weight on this hand? No, the hold the weight. Like, that's what I feel like you're doing, It's put a weight in their oh, hand. Oh, you mean this move? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, but again, what it still comes down to, we can do the plate move all the time, and we can make that work, and that feels good. But a bat in my hand, it might change. Because now, what do I do? So I still have to find the fact that I'm moving into a hitting position, and then I have to find out how am I going to work. So remember, this is foreign to most players, because they're used to something else. So again, it's two parts. But I guarantee you that you work the balance, you get all those feels, the next step gets a little easier. Because then you can sit there and say, direction, and the body is going to be able sustained direction. But if you get that kid with that front shoulder or those spinny moves or there's no way they can sustain direction. They can't do this. Yeah. So I'll touch because sometimes we'll work with uh, you know dumbbell feels, you know, just feeling that what we talked about that little move. Just feeling little things like this. I do that with a lot of righty lefties because that left hand is so so weak. You gotta get them used to that. We'll do band work with righty lefty. You know, we'll get them in a position where they just are in a position, step and feel. Step and feel. And as easy as that looks, it's not. It's not a good thing. If we try to yeah. Hold on, hold on. So yeah. like you're hitting the ball with the barrel. 
Absolutely. 100%. Hopefully. 100%. That's it, yeah. But if, like you said, you could even not even think about the barrel. Yeah. Um, and, and when you're saying direct with the barrel, that is, let's say, let's call that chopping, like I'm yeah. going right to it. Any so variation if you, that? If I'm you're not trying to do that, what would you say you are trying to do? Like, I what do are you want, hitting I want, with? I tell people, I want the barrel late. You know, we always talk about trying to get the ball out in front. Mm -hmm. And out in front isn't like by the TV. It's just, it's being able to exploit that zone there. You know, and even when sometimes we feel like we're hitting a ball deep, we're not, no one hits the ball here, that's not gonna, that's gonna be fair. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I ask guys, what are you trying to do? Because you see these guys doing these, 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 these articulations like, you know, I don't, I don't understand what you're trying to do. I truly do not. <coughs> I'm not trying to hit balls here. I want, I want to cheat that space here, because from here, now you can get out there. So again, the only thing is, particularly outside pitch, you'll find your kids are going to go middle in, and they'll like glom right on. Oh, this good. But then they got to work away to stay underneath because they see the ball away, and automatically they want to dump the barrel to go get that ball away. Because how many times you've been demonstrating guys showing, like we showed the kinetic or the. Uh, sensor people trying to think hit the ball this way and that's what everybody believes this is what we're led to believe this is how we're supposed to hit a ball if you go ahead and hand somebody a bat and say hit the ball 99 percent of them they never saw a bat they're probably going to try to do that then you get scared when they go like oh kind of like that okay that's the guy i want but that's the thought doesn't reach when you're saying i got to do that because we don't know what happens with that move but once we do and understand it, and young kids can get away with barrel moves, mm -hmm. right? You see it all the time. I bet you've seen some of your younger hitters too. They've been kind of barreling the ball out, and then suddenly, if they've got this athletic ability and quickness, you know, you know, twitch, hey, they might still be able to keep doing that. But in time, that's a flaw. Mm -hmm. And you have some, you have some guys that move barrels in the big leagues, but I'll tell you right now, it's a law of diminishing return. And that's a lot of guys like start off, and then when pitching change, guys got to eat up. Pitching has changed, you know. So people say, "Well, Doug, yeah, yeah it hasn't really changed. High school is this, college is." How would it hurt to have your pitch, your hitters, just more in conformity with a good swing, which means they can stay relaxed and they can adjust? That surely can't hurt them at a lower level. It can only make them better. Um, you know, I, like I said, I watched the draft and, you know, kind of not being that guy, but just watching. Good, but not so good, but not going to make it. Because there's going to be changes that need to be made. Because if you're not making the right moves, this game's going to eat you up. You know, because it comes down to that key word, being consistent and having adjustability. And if your swing doesn't allow that because your body moves don't allow it, you're going to, you're going to fail. So the biggest thing is, like we talk about kids are successful and we don't want to touch them, but you inherently kind of know, gee, we might be in trouble. That's time to have a discussion and talk about it. You know, and then, you know, simplify, say, look, we want to make you, you know, a little cleaner. You know, can we get there? Can we get here a little better? Whatever the case may be. And I know it's tough because they get ingrained, well, this is what I was successful with. This, this is what made me here. Why are you messing with me? But if they're struggling, they're just trying to figure out, okay, how much I should cheat on time to be able to hit the ball with my old swing. But remember, they're doing that. They're going to miss all pitches because they're not going to be able to catch up to all the fastballs. And they're certainly going to not be able to catch off speed. They're going to be in that bad in-between where they can't do much. And they're just, they're looking at just, you know, happy just trying to make contact. So that's the, that's the challenge. Luckily, when guy walks in this door, they're ready to make changes. <laughs> You know, and it's easy for me to articulate to a big leaguer, this is what, what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. And then they can say, oh yeah, I can see, oh, wow, okay. In fact, one of my big leaguers was a left-hander. And I was like, so who's your nemesis? Who's that guy you just have to say, oh, it's so tough to hit Chris Sale. And I get that. So we started talking about swing dynamics and changes and diagonals and said, oh yeah, now I got a shot. You know, just because he can see that. You know, he's got his library on the guy, right? Like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. A lot of guys, man, I just can't hit that pitch, or, you know, uh, you know, lack of confidence because it's like, 
I can't hit that pitch. But just change that, they can, they can have an understanding of it. But high school hitters may not have it as deep. You reach out and try to guide them. College hitters, it should be a little easier because you guys see some pretty good pitching. Sad thing is, winners aren't what they used to be, are they? And that's why I think the NCAA has done it wrong because our job is to develop players and have, you know, have these guys grow, have these girls grow. Because softball is the same thing, you know, no doubt about it. But unless we're training and we're getting, how, how we're, and God, how many hours you get? We we'll go back to that again. So a lot of things I want to be able to brainstorm today and, and tomorrow about is how can we devise, how can we think things that we can give to these young players to give them tools that they can work with to get their swings better? Because you guys don't get enough hands on time in the season and you get virtually none in the off season, which is critical mass for those guys to get better. When do you want them to change? March, right. April? By the time it's there, you know, we've lost eight months. So I really think that, like I said, and it's not like you're, you're cookie cutting, but it's like, how can they work on their moves? And like, give some ideas about moving balance, um, developing the back leg. Uh, Matt and I were talking yesterday, uh, has everybody seen the sling? Pushing a, a ball or pushing on anything because I need it free floating. But the key to this drill is to keep my knee and my foot underneath the hip. So I move back here, I've got my back heel, and I'm moving forward. I'm not making a front side move, but I'm really feeling the inside part of my back leg take over that. Who's my victim to try? Okay. So get that to the middle of the arch so it's supported, right? Now, what you're gonna do is basically you're learning to get this. Now, you gotta, now here's the other thing, I'll see it's reaching. Now, here's the trick. You've gotta get that inside of that leg and make it work. Now hold that leg under, just, yeah, feel the fight? Mm -hmm. Okay, but now are you feeling this light up? Just here, and all I'm feeling, this is not, yes, it's a pedestal, but it's not a hitting drill, it's actually a field drill. So what I'm gonna do is come down, there's my back leg, good. But I'm not reaching with the front leg, I'm just feeling it, again, just another way to feel it, and I get here and feel it. I'm trying to get every trick I can to get them to feel the back leg, because remember, the minute anybody's taught to spin, the back sides don't work. I think some of you have seen the kick drill. Where I make, uh, we let hitter hit and then kick forward. All that does is teach the backside to get going. I don't know how to respond to that. Me either, me either sweetheart. But the reality <laughs> is, the backside don't know how to work. And, they, and once it starts going, it's like, oh man. Funny, they'll start hitting the ball. Like, okay, go regular. And they go, yeah, okay. Boom. And they're feeling it because now the body's supported. Um, oh, if we can stand up and watch me on the wall, backside. Constant feedback, even on front toss. Got it? Question, make them feel. And there's never a you know, bad or good. It's like, oh, got that. Now, they can do this on their own, too. They're so worried about going on the field and hitting home runs, they don't realize, in a practice environment, we're working on fields. We're working on fields. How's my move feel? If possible, yeah. You know, we're kind of anal, we tape everything. But there's days I turn off the tape, too because sometimes guys worry too much. And I'll see something looking good, like that's looking good, good enough. I don't want them thinking, oh no, you know, it's not perfect. You know, it doesn't look like X, Y, Z. I can't get the answer to that on Apple Watch. Neither can I. But sometimes too much information, they're looking for perfection. And oh my God, I don't look like Mookie Betts, you know? I don't look like Yelich, I don't look like whatever. Rather than like, how much better are you? Because it starts in little stages. But again, fields. In a cage, it's always tough. And that's why I said, you know, when we start getting into like velocity training, hopefully they've got already got a pretty good idea of what they want to do. And they have to be close, they don't have to be perfect to be able to dial in. But a kid that's working on trying to reduce the front side move and he's not ready for it. Because no matter what he does, he's going to be perpendicular to plane of contact. And I want to try and stay here as much as I can. And I don't mean that as a shoulder move, I mean that as a freedom move. I want to kind of be in here. I want to feel everything kind of going in here. But the minute that their front side or brace or leg 
they're going to come off plane. So it's kind of counterproductive having to get off velocity until they're closer. Because I understand something. It's going to take them time, but you don't want to practice failure. <laughs> because I guarantee you, if they're trying to hit velocity going this direction, it's going to look like Odor facing sail. And you saw those compound angles. How, how, I mean, there's no way you can hit. And I think there's no better visual I've seen, and I was lucky to see it. It's like, wow. Because it just shows you this is, you know, there's no shot there. Going that way, it's, there's no way. But had he been able to maintain the angle of the pitch, he's got that much point to contact rather than this little pinprick that if he made contact with it, I don't think it would have been any good. Sounds reasonable? Questions? Go ahead. I think there, <clears throat> I think uh, a lot of the stuff that you're showing right now and everything and what would be cool to collaborate with is a way to get like a, you know, what you would consider maybe like your eight top non-bat involved things because when we do have our eight hours in the fall, four of them are strength and conditioning. And so we could do this stuff if we could implement strength coaches into our <coughs> strength and conditioning instead of using our IDs. Absolutely. But the other thing we want to do is make sure strength and conditioning coaches have kind of their own biases. Right. But we want to tell them, look, this is what we're trying to create. And you also, also kind of want to kind of chain them in a little bit, like, no, no, we don't need more. Because you see a lot of people think about, yeah, we're going to get those legs, right? It's like, I just lost my legs. Yeah. And people say, I, I, don't, I don't understand how we ever got into that position. but. Yeah, what we can do is also a big job. combo though, because I wanted to bring our guy down here, but he just took a different job. Because this stuff, man, is if we could work functional movement for the hit hitting into strength and conditioning, half I mean, the job is done. So yeah. we did it. We did it this this year with our strength guy. He said, "Hey, whatever you want, you know, tell me what you want with with the hitters specifically." So we did med ball, wall work. Oh, tell me about med ball. You see, my my ear just went ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Watch the mid ball work. You guys will like this. Because there's a lot of mid ball work being done, right? The throws and everything else, right? Are they doing throws? How are they doing it for? It depends on the guy. So it depends mm -hmm. on what they're trying to work on. Some, some of it's just holding it to support it to, to stack, you know, stack the legs. Okay, yeah, because a lot of guys, you know, throw mid balls. And I mean, I, I've kind of, you know, I, I don't pretend to be a physiologist or exercise scientist. I just look at what you're reinforcing in your moves, and I saw med balls being like this, right? Hard throws, really getting here. Well, that's an upper body move. And where's the front hip going? And then I saw rotational pulley work, and I'm like, no, I don't want you doing that, because I feel that's reinforcing something I'm trying desperately to get rid of. I want this, not this. So, I have this really neat friend that you guys know. And the picture may not be perfect. All right, anybody you know? See it? He's not violating the front side. So it's no rotation. No. And again, we're not against rotation. We're just against spinning. So I, I found that you just turn the hands over, right? You're right. And, and some of the some of the, the pitchers will actually do it with it. Well, they'll they'll turn the hands on, on the top, but that's all arms. You turn yeah, the hands over, it, to, yeah. and you're supporting it. Now you mm -hmm. feel it in the hip. Your hip is actually supporting it. Your hands are just there to hold the ball. Scoop the throws through. Yeah, so scoop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if the hip goes here, yeah, that's that's so dangerous. So you're yeah. saying don't do the one with the hand behind. Say scoop. What do you show me, Ferg? That's that's it. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about so, um, we had our like I like because I was seeing the same thing. I saw guys doing that. So we I tried to start implementing where they were. Scissor. Like I that. knew that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, a lot of people talk about scissor. <coughs> Scissors are great. I mean, it's a good cheat. It's a good drill. But they're guys that can't control their front hip, and they've got to really, you felt that, didn't you? Huh? <laughs> but again, the scissor, basically people say, well, it cuts off the front hip. I'd rather cut the front hip off than let it get in my way. Right. But the reality is, I'm probably going to do a heck of a lot of damage this way that people wouldn't believe. A heck of a lot more damage than if I swing like this. So the scissor 
The variance of scissors are drilled are good to try and feel I can go into that front hip. Um, I used to have people get a deep scissor to really start feeling that move. Fine. Some guys actually hit like that. Some guys hit like that without trying to hit like that. It just becomes a natural body reaction to trying to uh, retard the movement of the hip. Um, I know, have heard people say that that's a cheat and that the hands always come across. What would you say to that person? They're wrong. Anyway, <laughs> easy. Uh, because if I do, if I'm doing everything right and I'm working on my shoulders, where are my hands going? If I'm doing it wrong with my shoulders, it doesn't matter. So again, I would say they probably misunderstood what the body was doing at the point that the movement was made. Um, yeah. So there's lots of things we can see that we can actually play with. And like one guy might get it with a scissor, and one guy might, you know, get it with, look, just enter, you know, finish toe up, trying to grind, but we just want to get away from that first move. Now one of the fun first moves we do a lot of is we call how the body works. So we talk about why we don't like front side move. So everybody just put your arm out like this, okay? And what I want you to do is literally just bring your elbow and shoulder up. Pretty easy, right? Go ahead, bring it up. Right. Okay, set here, now move this forward one inch, you have to bring your shoulder up. Your body fought it, didn't it? So you can see if I do this right, if I make this move, this shoulder drops to no issue. I do this wrong, shoulder's an issue. So we're talking about that much, right? But again, we can train that. We can either train it in, or we can train it out. But the key is, this is how the body works. This isn't magic. And you realize, I said, if I can, if the body resists a move that's negative, I'm in. If the body makes a move that's going to make a negative move, I'm off. So again, lots of these shoulder moves means I'm out of control here. I can't, it doesn't want to work as, as easily. So it, it's not going to just fly out of control. So I've got a fighting chance. That's where we talked about the backside making the move. But then when the front side makes a move, it pulls. And this becomes the kind of people to understand the push because the right hand is basically catching up the left hand. At that point, all I can do is try to draw the ball. So we have concepts we talk about hands, and then we talk about barrels. Trying to give the hitter, did you, hand, did, did you use your hands on that or was it a barrel? And gen generally, we break it down and you look, and it comes down to being, you know, body move, barrel. Front side move, barrel. Back side move, hands. And again, the path goes from here to here. And that's what we talk about. So how do we adjust from 95 mile an hour fastball to an 85 mile an hour slider? You know, be in that line, you know, have our body in a good position that we're able to ride if we have to and go through. Um, Chavis for, Chavis for the Red Sox has dropped to a knee and hit a ball. And remember, Adrian Beltre used to drop to his knee all the time. But people never said, was the reality of every time he dropped to his knee, what pitch was it? Break the wall. Okay? That was his way of saying, see it? No way. He's not going to open up on it. He's not going to come around it. So I thought it was actually a pretty athletic move to be able to control his path through a breaking wall. But I people just say he's dropping his knee, but every time it was this. So you see, recognize spin. There we go. Ball, uh, excuse me, to not have a swing that gets beat by B low. Right. What are the keys. important things for you to make it so you handle B low and pitches at the top of the zone when you need to? At 6 4. Be Justin Turner? <laughs> <laughs> Justin Turner. Are you telling us Turner? Here's Justin Turner. Any redhead guy in the beer is a No. But when we talk about hand path mm -hmm. and you don't get the ball in front, realize I'm not hitting a ball here. There's nothing good happening here. Mm -hmm. But even the same hand path, may I? Even the same hand path, remember the glow bar? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Even the same hand path that gets low can get up here too. But I'm not gonna get it here. And that's where you see guys get stuck. They're like jammed up in here. Usually a shoulder move, because in a higher pitch, closer eyes, what do we think? Mm -hmm. So if you can just stay, think down, you go up, you'll get there really easy. That's JT. And again, handling the high, the high zone and, and the raises on top of it, high spin, it's not a perfect science. It's a tough pitch to hit, no doubt. But you can get there. The good thing is, 
We don't need much to do damage up there. But the key is also when we talk about shut piece. Okay. Talk about what? Shut piece. And it's when the kids and you can do this. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where are you at, Gally? Yesterday, yesterday, uh, sophomore in high school was in the uh, velocity, went shut piece. Why? It was a ball. It was great because what happens is you start getting really in tune to your body. And I feel this, feel that, shut piece, that's a ball. I don't give a, I don't give a damn what that guy says. If it's fastball and you know what, I'm not, no, no seams, no spin, that's fastball. I'm up here, that's a ball. Shut piece means like shut it down. Shut her down. Shut, her down. shut her down. The other thing is I tell hitters, shut piece has a lot of good variations. For instance, like I said, if you break posture, shut piece, because it's probably a ball. But at worst, it's a strike and you're in a crappy position to hit. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather be 0 1 than 0 4 1. Mm -hmm. So there's, to me, the discipline of like, oh, I'll off a little bit. And it literally, sometimes you ever see a guy like sit and, mit and just stop on dead red, realize something was off. And they get the maturity to realize, like, if I'm not getting my good swing off, I'll just shut her down with less than two strikes. That's big in BP. I feel like it's important to, for our hitters to, uh, when, when it's an emphasis to, they'll get into swing mode in BP. They'll just swing at everything. Yeah, whack, whack, it, yeah. it won't be on time. They'll be, like, looking out over the play, and they'll swing at a pitch way in instead of shutting down the swing because oh. they don't, they're, usually so young that they don't realize they're not ready. They have no chance. Yeah. And they still no chance to get themselves out. But the other thing, they do think, it again. now you think about it, if they've got wrong swing mechanics, they got no chance anyway. For sure. Okay, because if I've got bad swing mechanics, I got big things going on and I'm coming, I can't stop it. It's like, I'm gonna try and articulate, but if I'm working and balancing underneath, it's like, I've got a chance. Because the brakes go on really easy. It just feels right there. But the minute I start having outside moves, ball, body change, anything else, man, I'll take swings that I didn't intend to. I remember doing this a couple of times, I hate to admit it. There are times I was at the plate and I knew someone was ball and I, I swung anyway. I'm like, what are you doing? I was like having a fight with my body, like what happened? Mm -hmm. But whatever, I was in such a bad position that I knew it was a ball, but that's everything yeah. started anyway. It's like, you know, excuse me, I'll probably go kick my own ass a little bit. I like guys that are really good at check swinging. Like not intentionally, but because of how their swing works, they can hold it. That's why, like I said, if you have talked to uh, JT, He's, yeah. because you know the check swing here, <laughs> check swing here, got a shot. Yeah, I got a shot. And sometimes, I mean, over the course of a long season, I'll take all those because all adds up. But the other concept being that if I'm not in a good position, like I said, okay, I'll be on two. I'd rather be on two than over one. You know, and just no, having, having no fear about the next pitch. You know, it's like the kids are freaked out. Oh man, God, I missed my pitch. God, you know, so you just see it in their eyes, right? It's like, no big deal. Because you realize every pitch is my pitch. Yeah. You know, okay, all right. Come on, show me. And like I said, when you start getting them on that slider machine, who is, who, to LSU. The LSU came in about two years ago. And they just found a little slider machine. They loved it. You know, just sat here for a couple of days, it's like, oh man. So suddenly your guys don't fear sliders, right? They get encouraged to, yeah, I can hit this thing. And then their eyes start working. And Toby, what do you call those balls? They're incredible balls. They've got the mixed ball, they, they'll throw an automatic ball. And you know, so it's like, that they can actually work, work off sliders. And even though some, most of these machines aren't exactly what I'd call perfect, which is good, I like the randomness. But I like the idea of the incredible ball because you could control what they're getting and kind of see how they're how they're handling it. Unfortunately, our team thought to swing at the one that bounced <laughs> and take the one that was a strike. I told you you couldn't they, go after those cricket players in India. That's man. what they they interpreted that drill as. So yeah. But you uh, like you like colored baseballs? No. Okay. Uh, look, 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 just me. Uh, a lot of people do eye vision, tennis ball stuff like that. Hey, if you've got a setup and you can do it, you know, I'm all for anything, but I also look at how much time do we really have? Okay? Now, let's talk pet peeves. When you hit BP, your first round is a situation or hit, hit and run round, right? Any hit and run round? Hit and run round? Sometimes. Why? When I've had the ability to influence that, sometimes I'll do it because it's 
very tough or it's it's like I mean I remember being a hitter having the first round be like hit and run and slash and all this. I'm like, man, this is stupid. I want to my I'm swing is getting ready. Yeah. And but then here's the thing: how many times I talked to Monty at Clemson? Said, Monty, how many hit and runs did you run this year? Yeah, right. Yeah, we run like three. Yeah. Like so, I said, and we started talking about that. You know, because we always do that hit and run round. And I said, okay, we do hit and round every time in practice. So six days a week, guys are swinging a bat and they're wasting X number of swings doing a hit and run which I never do, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm all for bunting, but I'm always gonna look at certain, I would sit there and bunt is not the automatic, I'm not a real fan of West Coast baseball, but I look at, I want the right situation if I bunt, I want the right bunter, and I want the right runner, mm -hmm. because I'm giving up a precious out. But again, to me, the key is, we wanna focus on the reinforcement because that time on the field that we're actually hitting is short. For sure. We can talk about the extra work we do, you know, they can do all that other stuff if they want to do, like, you know, you know bunt work. I'll do that off time. You know, they're accountable. If you're not doing it, you're going to know. But you're going to still them, hey, we expect you to be, this is our culture. We expect you to be ready to play. This is what's going to take. Um, but, and then, you know, my worst gripe about BP is it doesn't give us any time to hit. If I was a college program, I would scream and shout to get two tunnels. I go side by side BP. Because then one guy throws, boom, then the next guy throws. But that gives a hitter time. Particularly, I mean, an a experienced hitter can find a setup pretty fast. Young hitter gets caught up with boom, 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 without saying, okay, what's my intent here? So to me, I don't need you to be overwhelmed in BP and hit 90 miles an hour. <laughs> BPs, you know, get loose, feel free, you know, get, get your feeling your stroke on. And then, you know, move on from there. But it's so fast because I get it. 45 minutes, got to get, I got to get four rounds in, you know, four guys. Guys don't have a chance. The other thing is bad BP, right? Do you guys have to throw BP? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, how are those arms feeling? I, the coach left, but literally one of the coaches had to have Tommy John surgery because he coached summer ball too, right? And he's one of those guys. Get them down where they're able to just take a ball from here Throw it straight, make a flip, and just feel it. Just to feel this motion, because this isn't natural to a, a lefty, a righty-lefty combo. Because what I've got to do is tie in balance and this move, and invariably they're used to a pull move, and I just want to get this closer. I give righty-lefties a lot of leeway, <laughs> because they are working kind of at, they're working in contrast to how a normal righty-righty or lefty-lefty works. Front side work. What is he practicing? I'm not sure, but please stop doing that. <laughs> okay, because you know people have done front side work, hit the ball to front side. Well, let's look and see what's happening with this swing. Okay. Now, this is an individual who did eventually fix his balance. This is not me, this is not our drill. He gave me this picture so I could, you know, work with. The idea is what he did, but that's all changed now. Okay? Low deck pedestal, right? So, I don't care what the drill is, I better be using the move I want to make in the game. Now, as you can see, the front shoulder is completely engaged. See the reach coming? So as we reach, the body is just spinning around. So he's trying to hit a ball like this. The only place he can go is out and around. Dead, dead back in. So what we try to do is eliminate that kind of a drill. We do use a lighter bat. It's about eight inches lighter for any one hand drill because you know, you can wear things out, but they're not about forced contact either. But I really only allow, like, on the left hand or the front hand drill for either hitter down. Just feel that move. And when they get really good at that, they can actually do taps. Where you're not trying to hit the ball, but you're not trying to violate 90 degrees. So we're trying to create what? We're trying to create this motion. But the minute I go to try and hit the ball with this left hand, guess what happens? So I'm reinforcing something I can't survive. 
once that front shoulder fires, we're, we're going to be fighting it. It's going to take over. There's a, there's a margin, but it's about that big. <laughs> if I can work under that shoulder, I'm fine. If I can work under it, because that allows me to have my path. But I can't work up around it. I can't come up, because my incidental contact here is not going to be consistent. It's not going to be good. There's no adjustability. What are taps? Taps are like I said, you do a flip and you just tap it. Tap it. Tap it. And you lead. I'm leading with my front hand, my bottom hand. But I'm not trying to control the bat. Most kids are going to try to control the bat. It's just like tap, tap, tap. And if you look at my hand position, it stays here. So it's easy, but doing it with a light bat. But I never want any hitter doing anything that involves swinging the bat with the left hand. What are we trying to get rid of? The front side. So we're really doing it wrong if we try to do anything. Sorry, I mean, I'm kind of anal about that. If I'm trying to get rid of something, I'm sure not going to reinforce it. Same with, you know, top hand drills, very it. A lot of times I have knob available. But what hitters will do if you do things, sometimes they cheat, right? They'll come back here to hit. Well, somehow there's a miss there, right? Oh, there it is. But they've got to get to the same point and then just be able to articulate through and I really want them to get the feeling of just getting this started and not getting this started. So it's like late barrel and still feel that through. I gotta pick on Ferg. I gotta see if the game is going. Right. See you coach. Thanks, sir. How would a front hand drill work like that? Can you feel it? A front hand drill? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm see that's a round going. Yeah. So we call it Have you ever done the one? Where you put something and you gotta stay inside? No. Do you, do that do you know why? Because I don't want the left hand taking any control of anything. Let the right hand do control. I might go for that. Even even to feel that that move there. Yeah. See, so if you look, when you do that feel, guess what's gonna take over the swing when the right hand's on it? The shoulder will overcome that. Right. That's why I look at. And if we think about that relationship, the minute the shoulders move, in trouble. I remember we talked about being able to do this versus this. Anything that pulls us off plane, we gotta be just like exaggerated out. And yeah, gun use for the game, the margin changes. Because we can actually get some and then we're gonna be okay. But we've gotta practice if we want none. Because if it's too much, it's, it's way on the other side. So the exaggeration is trying to really keep playing. And I know, guys go, hey, was I okay? Yeah, you're fine. Because I can see now, doing the right way. Being able to get through here with drive. But the minute this pulls off, when you pull your shoulder up, feel what happens on the backside. Feel the release. I want to feel that backside controlling that. So we start thinking about all these little things that are just basically body moves. But let me tell you, start getting, that, start getting those glutes and that lower half into balls. And that's when things change. If you do the checking right, you're going to be able to, the ball would leave and go upward the rise. Now, the check has got a great qualifier that it's going to show you what your body does wrong. If I over swing or if I do some hard use of body move, the ball's going to blow you up. Because when I you work some, I hide behind the cage. Because they go, if they go big body move, out of control. You go to the shoulder, you can go up in the wrong. So you've got to be able to find how your hands can just work underneath and through. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> now, effective for kids? Absolutely. Players? Absolutely. That's pretty good. Not bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my spin. Uh -huh. So think of all the bad things we talked about. Make every move that's bad and watch what happens. What's the other one? Go ahead and throw your shoulder out like you saw those poor kids doing in the minor leagues. Yeah, I'm going this way. Wait. I'm going that way up, right? Oh, yeah. Do that, do that thing. That, the ugh. Shoulder up. Yeah, go ahead. There, I lost that. I like the first one best. Though. Yeah, I do too. Okay. More to it. Now finish that. Go ahead and finish. Okay, now here's a fun thing. Let's go fun with it. Go play fun with the chucky. Okay, so now you're going to put the ball behind you so you can load. 
And what I want you to do is get used to being able to throw the ball up the middle, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw balls that way, not to be hit, but just to be seeing that you're going to hit through a ball, right? Okay. Okay, throw, throw a couple up the middle. I don't know how I did it. Oh, lost already, huh? Well, let's say that's not horrible for a rookie. I'm under. Okay, so now get, get ready like you're hitting. And I'm going to throw a flip. Just hold right now. I'm going to throw the flip over there. But you're going to like swing in the middle. I'm not trying to hit the ball, but just get the idea. Yeah, just stay through the middle. Yeah, are you ready? Yep. Welcome to Helping Human Nature. Right? Yep. Get it up the middle. I'm getting it this one. Sure you will. Oh, shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> Now you can really change it up, guys. So what that does is create like a vision thing where you now have to like be in cadence with something coming. And at first, you see it just wouldn't stay there. So it's, it's not a bad drill. Like the first one I wanted to get that, uh -huh. that outside. Like yeah. About the outside get the the other thing you can do is you can do the check with your top hand. You know, but when we do top hand, I want it limited to where the top hand would actually fire from. And it's easy because we get here with like pretty big well. Yeah, we're missing them. So we get to set position stop and then chuck it. Go ahead. So you're going to carry it to your 50 50, both hands. Carry your 50 50, take the right hand off, fire. Good. Okay. Do it right there? No, but close. <laughs> take the left hand off, fire straight. This is your weak hand now. Yep. Right hand off, fire. Better. Okay. I couldn't do that again if I tried. Well, breathe, breathe, relax. Ah, I thought you said you could, right? Not really. Now, now you can do this. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Find a little. Oh, good. What this does is relax us. Remember, we were talking about uh, dip. But what I realized is the minute your tongue's here. It relaxes your jaw. That was the Michael Jordan thing that uh, you hadn't weren't aware of. Yeah, I had no idea about that. Yeah, I guess I got to watch more basketball, old basketball. Yeah.